Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman, and welcome to my Trump cartoon countdown for January 22nd, 2020. Uh, this edition, the uh, Senate impeachment trial edition, special edition, Senate impeachment trial edition, where I focus on, I focus on the trial and surrounding uh, events in the, within that parameter. And so uh, I want you to know the countdown is based upon the number of impressions on Twitter, and that's the best uh, parameter that I could get as far as quantifying the response of people to my cartoons. So let's have, this will be uh, about seven cartoons, starting off with, uh, well actually, seven cartoons, but I'm going to introduce, give you two cartoons that are not fully tested yet on Twitter, because I just did them this morning, so I can't, I don't have the feedback from Twitter yet, but I'm going to inject them because I feel they're, they're kind of significant, and as a special edition, I'm just adding that on this time to the countdown. So this is not the countdown, this is like a, 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 a kind of like special edition of the countdown for the, for the impeachment trial in the Senate. So let's have a go at it. And here is, this was actually a retweet from a cartoon I, I had already done, but I added here uh, a, a reaction from uh, John Roberts from, from yesterday's uh, event where he got a little upset at the Democrats and the Republicans. So I'm just going to give you the backdrop to the cartoon and, and you, you just have a take at it. Okay, so here's, here's the story. Basically, is that Trump is basically having a nightmare about the upcoming trial in the Senate of uh, Rudy Giuliani testifying. You see? So here's how the nightmare went. So we have here Chuck Schumer. Senate Minority Leader, and he's, he's questioning Rudy here, Rudy Giuliani, and here he goes, okay, here he goes. The first question to Rudy in President Trump's dream, nightmare, he goes, is it true you told President Trump you wanted former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, out of the way because she had an anti-Trump bias and interfered with your investigations to get dirt on the Bidens. And now here's Rudy, here's Rudy's response to that question in the dream, in the nightmare. Okay, I did need, this is what I, this is what uh, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani actually said word for word. I didn't need her out of the way, I forced her out because she was corrupt and she had the support. This is, this is a little bit of my inference here. And she had the support of the deep state who wants our president out of the way. Okay, now here is the update to this cartoon. Here's John Roberts sitting there taking this all in. You know, this is his, as I said before, it's his nightmare too, along with Trump's nightmare. So he says, okay, I'll let you read that. There he goes. I should have been a mob consigliere, <laughs> you know, instead of the Supreme Court, the head of the Supreme Court. You know, here he is sit sitting there, and he's basically in a helpless position because he has no authority whatsoever. And all Mitch McConnell is really running the show with his Republicans, and he's just he's just sitting there like a like a like substitute teacher in a classroom, you know, saying, you sit down there, I'm going to call your mom up, you know, I'm going to get your phone numbers. I mean, well, we got a guy, you know. So that's what he's, he's basically in that position of a substitute teacher. And it, it, with, a, with his black gown and everything like that, with his status of who he is, but you're putting him into this, injecting him into this, uh, in the, into this uh, scenario, that's what the story is. So he might have been thinking that, and that's, the, that's really fundamentally the, uh, the retweet and update of this cartoon from yesterday. Okay. Okay. That's not number anything because that's yet to be uh, decided, you know, just done. So and here's another one uh, as part of this special edition. And here I'm going to give you the characters. And here we have again, here we have again um, uh, the Chuck Schumer here 
Senate Minority Leader. We have President Trump, and we have Mick Mulvaney. Okay, now, here's what goes on here. Let's have a go at it. President Trump and White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney in Oval Office watching Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer on the downing of his Fourth Amendment. So what they were doing yesterday was every amendment that uh, Chuck Schumer, Senator Chuck Schumer introduced, they, they voted on it and they voted down all according to party lines. It was like, you know, you didn't even have to vote. You just take it. You're a Republican, you go one way, you didn't even have to have a vote. You just could have predicted it reliably, reliably that this is how it goes. You know, the, the voting was just a formality when you think about it. So it was just based upon who, which party you belong to, and your perception was based upon party, not by what's good for America, in, in, in my view. I mean, in some cases, yes. But as far as Republicans go, I mean, the way they, well, anyway, I don't, again, I don't want to put my, inject my opinion. I want you to form your opinion and have a good laugh. So I'm staying out of this. So here, here's, here's how it goes. So Chuck, he introduced, this was the Fourth Amendment that he was introducing. Three of them were already rejected and voted down upon. Okay, the Mulvaney Amendment, my Fourth Amendment, the Mulvaney Amendment to subpoena Mulvaney. Okay, they want to get Mulvaney up there because Mulvaney was basically he was the acting chief of staff, and he was basically in line underneath Trump, giving the orders to the OMB, basically the Office of Budget Management, to, 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 to short circuit the funds that were going to Ukraine for military defense. So Ukraine, uh, so so uh, Mulvaney was right in there. He was right in the action. You know, he was like he was like. Uh, he was like the thing on a mousetrap, boom, you know. That's <laughs> he was a hatchet man, in a way. So that's how that goes. So now here we have uh, the conversation going on while they're watching the, uh, the, the on TV here. We're watching. And this is what uh, this is. This is word for word what Chuck Schumer said following the defeat of this Fourth Amendment. The Mulvaney Amendment was also defeated. The Fourth Amendment to go down. Okay, so here is Chuck Schumer. Here he is. Here's Chuck. Hi, folks. And he's saying, we will not back off on getting votes on all these amendments, which we regard as important to the country. Okay, and here's President Trump. Here's President Trump watching this by the fireplace with, with Mulvaney over here giving, okay, yeah. It's Trump. So Trump goes, Mick, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about that F blank 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 hawk, John Bolton. How can we control him? In other words, uh, the issue, I, I feel the issue here with John Bolton was that he, was, he wasn't uh, much, he, whatever he, he, you can criticize him on being a, too hawkish and this and that, but he was going, coming from where he thought the country should go, whether he was right or wrong. It really is, is not the point. But he was, he, that was his view, you know, and it was extreme, you know. You know, years ago we had Barry Goldwater, you know, so, I mean, it takes, that's a part of democracy is you have different view, views and, and, you, and you kind of formulate the, the, the line of the path to take from all these different views. That's how it should have gone. But that ain't how it, well, anyway, I don't want to interject, inject my view. But I'm just telling you, giving you the backdrop here to how what's going on here with John Bolton. Uh, it stems from the disagreements over, again, pulling out uh, of Syria. You see, I think that was the line, that was the Rubicon when Trump uh, pulled out of Syria. I think that was a Rubicon, <laughs> across the Rubicon for Bolton there. So that's just my, again, that's my opinion on that one. I give you my opinion there. So anyway, so here is uh, Mick Mulvaney. How can we control, this is again, Trump finishing off, how can we control, how can we control him? How can we control John Bolton if he gets up there and testifies? Because he's going to say what he feels is good for the country, not what's good for Trump. He's going to speak his mind, and he's going to say whatever he's going to say. So here he goes. And here's Mick Mulvaney's plan. He's got a plan. He always, Mick Mulvaney always has a plan. So here's his, his plan now. Here he is, giving a thumbs up. Okay, Mr. President, I have a great idea. Let's just declare war on Madagascar, and that's an African nation, East Africa, an African nation, 
and appoint Bolton the Secretary of War on East Africa. Okay? So if we get Bolton into the war, and we're happy to have fight a war with East Africa, a uh, nation of uh, Madagascar, he should be pretty happy. And maybe we could work a few things with him. He won't be so hostile towards us when he testifies. This is all my creation, but you know, based upon what we've seen here, I mean, it's plausible you know, in a crazy kind of way. So anyway, so here, here is the response from President Trump. Mick. Get me the president of Madagascar on the phone. Remember, make another phone call. So that's where I watch my hands of this cartoon. And I want to, again, hope you enjoyed the cartoon. And here we go. Now we start the countdown. OK, now we start the, this is the real countdown based upon the impressions on Twitter. OK? OK. Now, this is, this is a little wordy, and I don't want to bore you people. And I want to speed this thing along. I don't want to like, speed it along. Like, like, but I want to get to the point, keep the points, and keep, keep the points coming rather than get into a lot of uh, talk uh, in general. So here's, how, here's again, here's my drawing of Amal Alexander Hamilton. Okay, as Alexander Hamilton. And when Al Alexander Hamilton comes back and he t makes a tweet on Twitter, you know, so here he goes. He, Alexander Hamilton responds on Twitter to Trump impeachment attorney Alan Dershowitz who has advised Trump to go for a very short constitutional defense focusing on the inadequacies of the two impeachment charges given Dershowitz's narrow position. So Dershowitz wants to walk in and he wants to just knock it down. He wants to drop an atomic bomb on this whole deal by saying that it's all unconstitutional because it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. The, 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 it's just like the, the glove don't fit, it just doesn't fit. You know, it, because the fact is, you, it has to be specific uh, laws that have to be broken to impeach a president. And you can't do it uh, if he does something bad for the country or with this or that. It doesn't matter. It's his bad judgment because there's no law that can prosecute him or impeach him. And if you can't prosecute, you can't impeach. And that's this whole theme of Alan Dershowitz. Now, here is, again, uh, Alexander Hamilton. Okay, so, so I just want to read a little bit more here. Dershowitz now a position that a president cannot be impeached for merely jeopardizing America's security in favor of a foreign enemy nation without a specific charge in the ballpark of the perhaps most misleading phrase in the U.S. Constitution, which is, it's misleading and it's, 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 it's very, very nebulous. It's, it's very, very, um, it's not clear. High crimes and misdemeanors. I mean, you know, so anyway, it, it, you know, well, so anyway, the point here, because, therefore, according to Dirk Woods, any bribery allegation to be impeachable would have to be defined by specific, as I said before, criminal statutes punishable in criminal courts. So you'd have to have specific, a specific law that you could point to, he violated this, he violated that, and there's the law, and there's the, and there's the conviction, or, 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 or the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the trial. You see, you can't have a trial without having a law being broken, specifically. So that's it. Now, Alexander Hamilton, he responds, Alexander Hamilton, at real Alexander Hamilton. You see, so what they did, what they, their, 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 the pattern has been to, to, to try to uh, cherry pick. Uh, the Republicans seem to have done this. They cherry pick things that other person says, they magnify it to make their own point, and they, leave, they delete or leave out other aspects of it. So you, you get a view. Uh, which is basically, you know, on this, uh, in, you know, fitting into the Republican scheme of things. Well, there I go. But I have to say that because it's true. In a way, it is true. It is not in a way. It's true. So here, here's, 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 here's again, Alec, Alexander Hamilton, again. Okay. Took me a while to draw him, but I think I got him pretty good. There you go. Here we go. There he is. There's Alexander Hamilton. And here we go. America, don't get pissed off at me because Dershowitz invoked my Federalist Papers. He, this is papers that he wrote about impeachment. The Federalist Papers covered impeachment. And it wasn't all about it. It, was, it covered that. Trump's defense attorney never said, I also wrote in 1792, that the republic remained vulnerable to the rise of an unscrupulous demagogue. So he, they, nobody said, no Republicans ever brought that up, that he had written that. See, so anyway, 
Back in the early fall of 1780, I caught General Benedict, this is, all, this is true, I caught General Benedict Arnold, the new commander of West Point who had sold out to the British, planning to turn over the fort, turn over the fort to the British, and he was given some sort of a, a, a commissioned position in the British uh, military, and he'd receive a lot of money from the British, and at the same time, he'd have a, a secure future ahead of him. He didn't see any future in, in the American, uh, uh, in America, because the people there didn't, didn't feel, he felt the people there didn't see his great talent. So he was, he was going over to the British to get his future, financial future secured with the British, working as a basically a sabotaging America here. So if Dershowitz had caught him, this is Alexander Hamilton, if Dershowitz had caught him, he might have advised Arnold to run for higher office. Imagine President Benedict Arnold. That's, that's the punchline here, folks. So this is, this is, I kind of brought back out the spirit of Alexander Hamilton and tried to recreate his reaction to what Dershowitz had said, because Dershowitz had used his, again, his papers, his Federalist papers in, in defending President Trump. And, and that's, from what I've read here, that, that's very, very, uh, very shaky ground, so to say the least. So I just wanted to, that's enough said about that. I hope you, you got a kick out of that cartoon and got some, maybe some information about that. Okay, here we go. I think this is number six on the countdown, Zoltar. We have Zoltar here, and then we have President Trump going to Zoltar, uh, asking a question about Dershowitz, about whether Dershowitz should stay on, because Dershowitz is going to deliver the opening uh, constitutional argument here to knock him out in one punch, you know, to get into the ring round one, boom, you're down. Because with this constitutional argument, there's no need for witnesses because the charges, the, 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 the two charges, uh, uh, basically are negated by this, you see? abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. So if you, if you, these are two general, uh, even though it, 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 you knock that out, you don't need no more witnesses, and that case closed. Everybody goes home and, has, and has, goes out for, for, for some whatever, pizza or, or, or beer or Coke or, or have some uh, Coca-Cola or, or whatever you're going to go, with seafood, Red Lobster, you know, Chinese restaurant, wherever you're going to go, so that's it. So that's what, that's what uh, he's saying here, basically, that would knock him out with a one-two punch. And, and that's the end of the impeachment. Everybody goes home after his constitutional, uh, that would probably be his, his best dream, that as soon as he does his, his, his introduction, everybody leaves and says, okay, great job, we surrender. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's it. Dershowitz's uh, plan of attack here. It seems that way. So anyway, so here is, again, President Bush going, uh, President Trump going to, President Trump going to Zoltar to ask Zoltar if he should keep Alan Dershowitz for the rest of the trial or just for the opening statement of, of, uh, of his constitutional argument against him, his impeachment. So that's where we stand here as Trump makes his, his uh, question, his question to Zoltar the fortune teller, Zoltar. Okay, and here is President Trump. Okay, Zoltar, Allen has been fantastic in defending me on liberal fake news cable shows. He's been a loyal Trumper through all the hoaxes. Should I ask him to remain on my legal team on my legal team, what say Zoltar? Here's Zoltar. Mr. President, Zoltar agreed. Alan Loyal Trumper. Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska might not like it. Why might she not like it? Because of the fact that here, Dershowitz had said, has reportedly written, assume Putin decides to retake Alaska. This is true. He wrote this in one of his books that if, if Putin suddenly decides to take Alaska the way he took Crimea, in extreme, in extreme case of collusion, there may still be no legal grounds for prosecuting a, a president, or hypothetically President Trump, or any other president 
who did such a thing like that? You know, it could be China too. It could be okay, China. They they could take over. They could take over a, a section in, in New York City, in Chinatown, and you know that's that's part of the Chinese of the Chinese regime now. But and the president goes along with that. Okay, that's good. You know, but but this, the thing is that he Alan Dershowitz would say that's fine because there's no specific law stopping him from doing that. And so you couldn't you couldn't impeach or prosecute a president who, who makes a deal with an enemy, a hypothetical enemy enemy nation, whatever it would be, but you know, to um, to I'm not saying China's a hypothetical. I, I don't want to get into get into damn it. I don't want to get into start saying making but I'm making the point here that that the point is that Alan Dershowitz in his, in, as, a, as a brilliant, as a sort of a, a, a academic scholar, it's hard for me to, uh, to understand how he came up with his recipe for, for justice. I don't know how he did that, but he did. And so, again, here is that. His, his theory, his uh, hypothesis, legal hypothesis, is that you couldn't prosecute a president who makes deals with a nation who's against America to give away America's land. So again here, uh, but Republican Lisa Murkowski, she might not like that so much. And then he goes in the traditional way, why well, pay more for what you don't need? So what happens here is Lisa Murkowski is kind of, a, a, kind of like the other end of the spectrum in the Republican Party where we have uh, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell in the Republican Party, Murkowski is, is like the flip side on the other side of the record. She's 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 the uh, you know she's is, is kind of a middle ground you know, and she wants to take a look at things and is open to fur to further uh, explore the possibility, perhaps, of bringing in uh, witnesses at a later point. Whereas Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham, they just want to go home as soon as possible. So. To, to start agitating Lisa Murkowski now and get her pissed off might not be too good of an idea, especially if you need four Demo four Republicans to, to bring in the witnesses. So to, to get to lose Lisa Murkowski and get her and get her in the boat with, with the Democrats would be a bad move. So that's what Zoltar, that's sort of the message behind Zoltar saying, why pay more for what you don't need? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that was that one. Enough said about that, folks. Oh, okay. Now here we go to Lev Parnas. Okay, this is, here's, a, here's another story. And indicted Rudy, uh, Rudy Giuliani, associate. Here, first of all, here's Lev Parnas. Here, here's Rudy. And here's President Trump. And here's the story, the background, the backdrop to that. Lev Parnas, Rudy, President Trump. And George Washington there on the wall. Can't leave out George Washington. Can't never leave out George Washington because he's part of the scheme of things in this uh, cartoon. Okay. Indicted Rudy Giuliani associate Lev Parnas, a central figure in the White House's alleged Ukraine pressure campaign, says President, President Donald Trump knew exactly what was going on. Quote, that's a quote. Despite his repeated denials of wrongdoing, he was aware of all my movements. In other words, he's saying that President Trump was aware of Les, Par Les Parnas is saying President Trump was aware of all his movements. I wouldn't do anything without the consent of Rudy Giuliani or the President. And then he goes here, and this is something I invented based upon what he said in my own humorous way here, is he says, he says, uh, here, he says, here it goes. Here's how it went. And, and, and here's Rudy in the men's room and left part, well, I don't want to get into the details here. Uh, so here is Rudy reporting to President Trump what's going on here in the men's room. He says, Mr. President, he just made a movement. And then, and then President Trump says, George Washington is very proud of you, Rudy. There's a point of George Washington, the American flag. He says, George Washington is very proud of you, Rudy. For, for being pa for patriotic and getting Lev Parnas and keeping a, a tail on him to see that he does the right thing and everything for the betterment of this country to stop the, the aid to, uh, to Ukraine, the military aid. Uh, 
So they, enough said about that. There you go, folks. All right, now, okay, this is a, uh, a Giuliani flashback. Gee, I really don't want to do a lot of time on this, but it's a good, great cartoon, and I don't want to take up your time, and I don't want to do that. Here, I'm just going to give you uh, Rudy Giuliani here. This is a, Do this is a Donald Trump uh, retweet. The president, president Donald Trump re retweeted this on January 12, 2020. He, re he retweeted this. So I'm going to read his retweet, and then I'll kind of give you the backdrop here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Donald J. Trump at real, at real Donald Trump. Many believe that by the Senate giving credence to a trial based on the no evidence, no crime, read the transcript, no pressure, no pressure, impeachment, hoax, rather than an outright dismissal, it gives the partisan Democrat witch hunt credibility and that it otherwise, otherwise does not have. I agree. So he's saying the Senate, the fact that the Senate dominated by Republicans, they entertain taking this up, but they had to by law. By law, they had to. So he, he's, he's angry at them for, for following the Constitution, basically, for taking this up. But the president doesn't seem to uh, understand the fact that they are legally bound to do this by the Constitution when the, con when the, uh, when the House passes a, 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 an impeachment a, a judgment. It, it goes to the Senate. This is how it's structured. This is our this is our system of democracy. So, anyway, let's leave it at that one. Okay. So now here, this is a, a, a Giuliani flashback. Ru Rudy Giuliani attacks. Okay. okay. So I, I injected this Rudy Giuliani flashback uh, to show just what happened here. Okay. So Rudy Giuliani attacks Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vidman, suggesting star impeachment witness is disloyal and confused and less than 100 percent loyal to America, citing a New York Times report that said this witness discussed Giuliano's, Giuliani's shadow diplomacy effort to get dirt on the Bidens with Ukrainian counterparts in their native tongue. So he's, so Rudy Giuliani, is a flash, this is a flashback to an actual cartoon, and he did do that. Basically, he said that Alex, to discredit Vidman, a uh, decorated uh, officer, and uh, he discredited him by saying that he was talking to, he was basically talking in, on both sides of his mouth because he, he was talking to the Ukrainians. So, but he was talking uh, to, to try to, to, to make things, he was trying, he was fighting to make peace, not to make trouble. That's the difference. The difference here is that Rudy was trying to make, fighting to make trouble, and Vinnerman was trying, fighting to make peace. So he was trying to get both sides to understand each other and come to some sort of agreement in speaking in, to the Ukrainians. So he, the difference is between fighting for war and trouble, uh, basically, in his view, uh, not in his view, of course, he's a patriotic, uh, a, a dedicated lawyer to President Trump and President and the country as well, if that, if works, that works out and hand in hand. And, but the fact is that, that uh, he was making uh, a lot of waves there, and he wasn't authorized as a uh, as part of the part of the government. You see, so he was he was again uh, going after. Uh, well, let's, let's just just to leave it at that and try to keep to the point here. So then, so then, uh, so Rudy Giuliani uh, called uh, Adam Schiff. He goes against Adam Schiff now, and he says another shifty backfire. Okay, here he goes. Here's Rudy. He says, another shifty backfire, a U.S. government employee who has reportedly been advising two governments. He was trying to make peace, as I said. No wonder he's confused and feels pressure. However, the only opinion that legally counts is President Zelensky's, who has, a, who has clearly said no pressure. Going back to what President Trump said here, no pressure. So that was the common denominator between between Rudy, Rudy Giuliani's tweet and the President Trump's latest retweet. That was the common denominator, was no pressure. That's why I injected Rudy's uh, tweet here. So 
for that reason, to show the consistency of their viewpoints, okay, whatever. So, no pressure. End of impeachment, end of shift. That was 249, October 29th, 2019. October 29th, 2019, okay? Now, this is what I did to show there was no pressure. There was no pressure. There was no pressure. The pressure was from the Russians. So he had to be under pressure. If you have, the, if you have Russian tanks at your doorstep, I mean, so here, this is, this is uh, again, President Putin that he was thinking about in his mind with tanks coming in to eastern Ukraine. You know, they, were, they already had the Crimea, so now they're spreading out a little bit, you know, moving, moving east, you know, you know, like a, like a, a kind of like a, a, an American manifest def, destiny, manifest destiny, the way we moved out west, uh, Putin is moving east. To, to, you know, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's what it seems. It seems that way. It seemed that way. I, I don't know if it seems that way now. I think things are maybe a little bit better now that, that we, we are. The, the United States is, 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 is straightening its position out on Ukraine. I think things are, are probably better. I would bet that they are better, and I would hope so. So anyway, here again is, is this is the, this is Zelensky talking to the president. Okay, here he is. And there he's thinking about the Russian tanks coming in and President Putin in his mind. Okay, President Trump, thank you for your support in the area of defense. We are ready to buy your American missiles and to launch our investigation into the Bidens. We could use more information. So he's basically saying, I think he said this. I think he actually did say we could use more. Because he, he didn't know, he didn't have, he, it was like, to him, this was, this was like Chinese baseball. We take the bases and everybody runs around. He didn't know what was going on here because there was no evidence, you know? So he liked more information about, from President Trump, where he could start his investigation from, probably. So, but again, then again, he didn't have to have that because all he had to do was announce that there was an investigation. So he didn't need any, any uh, he didn't need any bases. All he needed was a bunch of ground to start to say, well, we're going to, we're going to start an investigation of the Bidens and let's leave it at that, you know. Anyway, so I, I hope you're, this is a little confusing. I, I try to make it simple and I thought it was an important common denominator to show that President Trump's no pressure and then Rudy Giuliani had the same uh, theme there and I just put it together with the response coming from Zelensky, his thoughts as he spoke to President Trump, possibly, as I would imagine. Okay. Okay, now, here we go to uh, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, Trump, President Trump called in to Rush Limbaugh uh, a while ago. Here we have Rush Limbaugh and I'll give you this. Trump calls into, okay, here we go. This is Trump as Mr. Clean, and here's Rush Limbaugh. The Rush Limbaugh show, the radio show. It's a radio show, not on TV, a radio show. Okay, and here's Mr. Mr. Clean, Mr. President Trump as Mr. Clean. Okay, Trump calls in to Rush Limbaugh radio show. Here, a segment when Trump rails against Democrats for impeaching him, calling the process a hoax, quote, a hoax, and saying the Russia probe led by former special counsel Robert Mueller demonstrated that Democrats found, quote, nothing that incriminated him, as Rush imagines how clean Trump must be, okay? And here's President Trump, you know, where he has that thing going up and down as, 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 anybody, as he's speaking here, the meter here, and he's saying, this is President Trump on the top. These people couldn't find anything on Trump, he's speaking in the third person like, even I was very impressed with how clean I am, Rush. He's impressed with his own, his own cleanliness, of how clean he is. So then here is uh, Rush, Rush Limbaugh, responding on, on the radio show. He says, Trump is F dot 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 Mr. Clean. And there he is, Mr. Clean, President Trump. Okay. A lot, a lot of impressions on that one, uh, on Twitter. Okay, now here's numero uno. Boy, this really hit the. Ch this really went up. This really was a was a good uh, 
got a lot of impressions on Twitter. And this is, again, here, the village people with President Trump singing the YMCA song uh, adapted to the 2020 campaign. The Trump YMCA 2020 campaign song. Okay, YMCA, remember that? Young man, remember that? <laughs> going back. Okay, so here, here is, here is the, uh, the, can the, this is the, this is the village people with President Trump. Okay, Trump's fantastic dream. This is a dream the president had, uh, I'm assuming the president had, the village people performing their hit song, YMCA, YMCA, adapted for a Trump 2020 rally following the president's ranting about the YMCA song. After being asked about his call for more NATO involvement in the Middle East. So, again, the president was calling for more NATO involvement in the Mid Middle East, again, with the dealing with what's going on with Iran. He feels now that we, we, we should be getting more and more closely fight working with our allies through NATO now that Iran, that we have ten, high tensions with Iran. So now the president is calling uh, upon NATO in a sense. NATO could be renamed NATO May, in other words, N A T N A T O M E, meaning NATO Middle East. So it's like, um, you know, that's what he was saying. He said that for the addition of Middle East, okay? And then I told people to think of the YMCA song, which I like very much to remember, the USMCA, USMCA, abbreviation for United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. So he wants people to remember that agreement that he feels that he did a lot of work for and he got for America, so he wants to us to all remember that, that agreement by remembering USMCA, which goes back to his favorite, oh, not his favorite, but a, a, song, a song that he liked from the village people called YMCA. So then, and then I have here the village people with President Trump on a 2020 campaign rally. Let's make America great again, okay? These are, this I drew with the act, from an actual picture of the village people. President Trump wasn't there. I, I put President Trump in there, obviously. He's, he was never part of the group, the village people. <laughs> I, know, I, so I just put, he's part of the campaign. They're part, injecting in the campaign, in the dream. He is with them singing the song, singing his Trump 2020 uh, campaign uh, song, YMCA, President Trump's 2020 YMCA campaign song. So I'm going to sing that song to you now. That's what I made. This is I wrote this song. So here we go. Young man, there's no need to feel down. Young man, pick yourself off the ground. I said, young man, cause you're without any food. Young man, there's no need to feel screwed. Young man, are you listening to me? You can get yourself clean. You can have a good meal. Vote for Donald J. Trump, and you'll have a new deal. Okay? <laughs> so. That was the song I made up, and uh, a lot of people, I guess, will enjoy that. So I'm, I'm glad that there it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, all right. So I want to just remind you folks that uh, I have my third book coming out in, a, in, a, in a, about a week or so, and I hope that you will uh, take the time to to go to my website. And where you, you can, there's a link there to purchase, purchase the book. Uh, and I hope you will enjoy it. And if you don't decide to buy the book, I hope, still hope you go to my website because there's a lot of stuff there you would enjoy. And, and that would be fine too. So whatever you want to do, it's a, really, it's, it's your decision. But I'd like you to just go to my website and just, just browse there and some of the cartoons I did and some of the, the other videos. And uh, again, the website, the website is Richard's Books of Political Cartoons dot com. That's Richard's Books of Political Cartoons dot com. And you gotta be very careful that you don't put any spaces in there, because you get to a completely different site if you if you uh, put spaces in. So it's all no spaces, 
richardsbooksofpoliticalcartoons.com. And the last thing I'm going to say is, oh, wait, I got one more here for you, folks. I forgot about this one. Okay, here we go. Here, 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 this was actually number one. This was number one. That was number two. This was number one. Here we go. Yeah. Here is, here is the Supreme Leader of Iran, Khomeini. Here's President Trump, and here's Nancy Pelosi. She's, uh, she's trying to, to take away Trump's uh, war powers against Iran. And here is the missiles of Iran being fired. And Trump is in the middle here saying all is well. So anyway, House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi seeks to rein in war powers of Trump and says the House will vote this week on legislation to limit President Trump's military actions on Iran in the wake of increased tensions between the two countries. After the President ordered an airstrike that killed Iran's top general last week, Iran General Qasem Soleimani. As Trump gets caught between Iran's ballistic missile attacks against two Iraqi uh, military bases and Nancy Pelosi after the president tweeting all is well. So um, I, I don't want to hit this one too, too hard because it's very, very, um, people got injured in that attack and people, and people got, I'm sure, um, got killed and, on both sides. And uh, the thing is that, that the, the thing is we, we don't brag about things that happen, uh, that things that we feel are, uh, that, we, that, that we've done, that had to be done in the interest of America. We, we, don't, we don't make it a campaign slogan. We, don't, we, don't, we shouldn't do that. I, I just think back to when uh, George H. W. Bush uh, moved in to Kuwait and we kicked Saddam out of Kuwait. H.W. Uh, Bush, George H.W. Bush, didn't go on TV and saying we kicked the, sh the what, out of uh, Saddam and this and that. And he just he just kept quiet. He was very quiet about it. And then you know there was no there was no. And then when the when the wall fell, uh, the Berlin Wall came down during his administration. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, we beat the Russians, we beat the Russians, thanks to me, we beat the Russians. You know, we, we, got, we got a unified country, Germany, we, we, we won the Cold War. George H.W. Bush didn't do that, you see? So I think, I think that, that demeanor that he has was just as important as our nuclear weapons and our military is to having a proper and a, a mature attitude towards what America feels fit that, that uh, it has to do. Nobody takes a joy or, or, or pleasure in, 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 uh, in having to take out a human being. And so uh, I'm just saying, using George H.W. George Bush as a, uh, as a sample of the way things should go in terms of when America has to strike. And, um, that's all I'm going to say about that one. Anyway, so anyway, here again is, a, is President Bush saying all is well, and the missiles, the missiles raining down on the bases here from, from the su Supreme Leader, and Nancy Pelosi out with a, a lasso, trying to lasso to, to get his uh, war powers uh, under control. All is well. All right, that was number numero uno. Okay. So, again, I just want to say one last thing before I sign off on this countdown is to remind you folks that I, uh, the, the prices on my two first books have been reduced, and this is a book that talks about the campaign from, from 2016. It, uh, Bernie Sanders is in there, and, and, and I do cartoons about Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, you know. I, I tried last week to find one. I'm going to try it again, I'm sure that we can find one here. Yeah, here's Hillary Clinton. Just to show you, we're, okay, here's Hillary Clinton. Here we go, Hillary Clinton. She's saying here, uh, I, I don't like to read these cartoons, but I'll read this one. Donald, Donald Trump builds walls, I build bridges, bridges, and we have these, uh, uh, 
you see what's going on here. And then we have uh, Clinton here, and then we have Bernie Sanders with the windmills, and we have here Bernie, Bernie with the, with the Supreme Leader and the leader of Saudi Arabia, saying these people should make up if the, uh, you know, the, the uh, Shiites and the Sunnis should, should kind of uh, kiss and make up. And, uh, and then, so we got all these things here, and then we got the smoke, Hillary Clinton saying when she was, uh, or the smoke coming out of her ears when she was uh, whatever. And then we have here the, uh, the incident with the veteran, a uh, large prostrate responds, a veteran fair scandal is not widespread. She was poo-pooing the, the problem with the Veterans Administration. Hillary Clinton was poo-pooing that, saying really not much of a problem, just an isolated incident with the, with the veterans. So things like that. Uh, you know, so I don't even know. I always try to, to cover, you know, things. And let's see. Uh, here. So I have, I have a lot of stuff on, on Hillary Clinton here. You know, in the book, this is the first book, the, uh, the greatest book of political cartoons on the Trump presidency with a flashback to the Democrat Republican candidates of 2016. So it's under, it's under $10, and if you just want to have a, a book like that, you could look, laugh at, and especially if Bernie Sanders is now on the scenes running again. So it'd be something to have. So anyway, and, and the, the book, uh, the first edition of this is here. This is, again, the greatest 2019 book, the first edition. The second edition will be coming out in a week. And um, this is, this is uh, a little, uh, I think, uh, well, it's not, it's not expensive. It's not expensive. I've lowered the price on that. The price has been lowered to make, you know, to make, it, sen make it sensible for people to, you know, to purchase the book. Okay. And well, I think I've gone through this with you plenty of times. Uh, uh, let's see if there's anything. Yeah, here, here, you know, I Trump with the Capitol, with Lindsey Graham. I have uh, really tried to, to, to really run the cross-section of things that are happening and try to make things better, not trying to attack people, but just trying to get everybody who's in politics, to, everybody makes mistakes and says things they shouldn't say. There's not a person on this earth who says things they shouldn't say. But I try to, to get people to, to laugh at themselves. If, if anybody, if, 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 uh, even President Trump would have picked up one of my books. I would like him not to get mad or upset. I'd like him to laugh at himself and try to, to see the things that he could, he could do to help America uh, instead of the things he, well, to help himself. Uh, it, it appears that way. Uh, that's the way it appears. And to, so that's where I'm coming from. I think if people start laughing, they could forget about themselves and start thinking about the good of mankind. So I want to thank you very much for watching my video and uh, I'll see you again at the next countdown and I hope you visit my website. If you don't buy anything, that's great. If you just visit my website and have a good time. My website again is Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com with no spaces. Have a great day folks and again a happy 2020 to you all. Bye.